How marvelous it is that the story of Jesus doesn't end in death. It ends in victory. On the third day, several women went to his grave to anoint the body and found that the stone had been rolled away. Upon hearing the news, Peter and I rushed to the tomb and found that Jesus had risen.
especially every third year, because that's in the cycle of the lectionary that it comes up. And I love this reading, because I think within it are words that are true and relevant to each and every one of us. Did you notice, did you notice that not one person, when they heard the news of Jesus' death, and resurrection, not one of them remembered that Jesus had said that he was going to die and that he was going to rise again. And the reason that we know that is because the women that went to the tomb, and I think it's wonderful that the women had enough knowledge and enough guts to prepare spices and to go. One more time in scripture, we see that women lead us. Thank you, women, for leading us, even today. Now, I'm going to side but I think it's important for us to realize that even in Scripture, it is the women, it is the women who actually led the way. So these women go to anoint the body. They didn't expect, they didn't expect Jesus not to be there. They didn't expect Jesus to be risen. As a matter of fact, they were looking around and they got scared. What in the world has happened to the body? Right? And then two people in dazzling garments. I rest my oh, yeah. <laughs> miracle after miracle after miracle 
of the way that Jesus touched people's lives, I encourage you to imagine a world filled with healing. John Lennon's song helped us remember, can you only imagine a world that is not motivated by the realities of a heaven or a hell, a religion of possessions, but a reality that is motivated by helping every one of us believe that we are loved by God.
so that people could be reminded that they are loved. People that sometimes we will never even meet. We do that each and every Monday through the bread ministry. This week, we have new people joining the bread ministry. Sherry and Robin have retired, and we're so grateful that they could take a rest because there'll be something else for them to do. <laughs> but this week, Leslie, Greg, and Kendall gathered downstairs to wrap bread. They picked it up, they brought it here. And then, on Tuesday morning, Sherry Baxter and Kirk Blanford <laughs> took that bread and delivered it. And then, later in the morning, uh, Lydia and Tom took more bread and delivered it to a neighboring church that we get to support, to remind them, to remind them that they have gifts to give people that come to worship there. What an amazing thing. On Tuesday night, the bell choir gathered right over here. And they continue to learn music. They continue to be a community of ringing bells, laughing as they did. Laughing as they did. And then we were followed by the choir, preparing this wonderful music. And wasn't it wonderful this morning? Yeah. And it's a wonderful each and every Sunday, don't you know? And Chris Kopchinski joined their ranks by making sure we had the videos. How amazing is that? The choir gives hours, hours of work so that they can lead us in worship. And they're doing things differently. Hallelujah, thanks be to God. Right? <laughs> and then on Tuesday night, line dancing happened because Carol shows up each and every week to teach us dances. Dale shows up to play the music, and then people show up to dance. And you know what the most amazing thing is? When I'm able to be there, I can dance, and it never fails. Somebody says, can I talk to you? <laughs> and oftentimes, that is somebody that is not from our church. Amen. It is, they are not from our church. It might be the bartender, it might be somebody else, and they might even be a little intoxicated, but that's okay. Because God gets to, because we are there, people can be blessed. And they are. I'm not done yet. And then, on Wednesday, Sherry Baxter came in to prepare to take down the Lenten altar arrangements and to prepare them for next week. So that next week, next year, we're not going back to Lent for another year. <laughs> but she took those altar cloths down and she sewed them. She had pins to, to, to replace them. She also taught me the wonder of a staple gun. And hence you have new Easter pyramids, right? And it doesn't stop there. And then Jim Strickland rolled in and started cooking dinner for the Living Wednesday. And then 18 people showed up for Living Wednesday this week. 18 people showed up to clean up, to make flower arrangements. Oh, you should have heard what happened at the Dollar Tree, I'll tell you at lunch. <laughs> I wanted to know why gay people bought so flowers. I said, how do you know that I'm gay? <laughs> <laughs> but these people, they made the arrangements and then they made treat bags for children. They were in the kitchen preparing the scallop potatoes that you're going to eat later today. But they're doing this out of love, believing that the resurrection makes a difference in people's lives. And then on Thursday, Tigger, Richard, Alan, and Carla rolled in to get the food pantry set up and to get the lounge set up. And you know what happened? 37 people were blessed with groceries and lunch because they did and because all of you participate and give to the food pantry. And it doesn't stop there. You see where this is going, don't you? On um, Monday, Thursday, we had 23 people show up. 23 people come to the Seder dinner to remind, to be reminded of how God brought the children of Israel out of bondage. And you know what? It's the same story. It never changes. But you know what does change? Our reality. And we need to remember that God leads us out of bondage. And that bondage comes in many different forms. 23 people were able to do that. At the very same time in this room, there was an AA meeting taking place. When I came up to look to make sure everything was okay, this room was filled with people, young people from AA. And they all say the same thing. Thank you for providing a safe place for us to come, to hear that life can be different. And they have this place because of you. Because we believe that the resurrection changes lives, 
right? There's another funny story about that AA meeting, I'll tell you downstairs. <laughs> At the very same time that the AA meeting was happening and the Seder was happening in the community center, we had the Buy Plus discussion group with eight people sharing from their hearts. And I, one of our church members said to me afterwards, oh, there was somebody, I was so concerned that what they were saying might be dangerous and blah, 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 blah. I said, stop. Because we had this group. You provided a place for somebody to be real and honest. And maybe that's all that this person needed. Because as we are real and honest, our lives change. Right? right. And we are reminded that we are loved. And it doesn't stop there. 18 people, 18 people came by to have private confession with me and to hear words of God's forgiveness. And some of the things that people shared were horrendous for them. And they shared it because of that relationship of pastor and parishioner that reminds them that they are not the guilty one. That reminds them that because of God's love, they are free. And people have to make the choice to work on their stuff or make the choice to live free because of the resurrection. Yes. And then we came back in this room Thursday, Friday night, 44 people came to remember that Jesus died for us at our Good Friday meeting. And while all of that was happening, Chuck Bateman, God love Chuck, Chuck Bateman was outside meeting with a gardener that Joy Whiteneck referred to us, and they were transforming the garden outside. And guess what? Nothing will keep them back. It was raining outside. Chuck came down to the church kitchen absolutely soaked, and I said, well, don't you look sad. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Why do we stand out in the rain? Why do we call people? Because we believe that the resurrection is important. We have faith to know that it's through the resurrection that we are reminded of God's love for us. And then yesterday, yesterday, Lord have mercy. I already told you my confession from yesterday, Loretta worked me to death. But Joseph and Loretta and Lydia and James Kirk and Sally and Sean and Ricky came to clean up our church and to decorate our church. Because we know that the resurrection is important. Bubba was downstairs making a potato salad macaroni salad. Kirk Lampard had delivered the pastries that were collected on Friday night. Oh, and I forgot to mention the Friday night bread ministry happened, thanks to Calvin and to Sean. Hey. And we have a staff at this church that just works tirelessly. Tirelessly. Sean does an amazing job being my hand. Love one another 
as we dare to stop thinking of ourselves and dare think that we have something to give away to someone else. And remember that God will give that amazing love to you because you are holy, you are beautiful, you are wonderful, just the way you are. Amen. Amen.